Hello guys, welcome back to my channel and listen I have finished term ladies and gentlemen Yeah, I have finished term. I am done with essays. I am done with deadlines. I'm done with lectures, supervisions I'm done with Mr. Muscle season flavored canteen food. It's a good day. It's a good day indeed I've catched up with my friends. I've catched up with my shows. I've been eating properly. I've been sleeping properly I have a healthy bowel movement. Do you see how good life is now? I'm feeling you could say very um unstoppable. What does unstoppable mean for me? Just means me being me, being happy, overcoming obstacles, trying to be resilient, and just trying to be happy at the end of it, regardless of what happens, be it my degree, be it your A levels, be proud of yourself and just know that you did the best you can do. But specifically, I am working with NCS, the National Citizen Service, and today I want to talk to you guys about an experience of when I felt unstoppable or when I felt resilient or when I felt like really confident when I overcame stuff. And if you know me, if you know Ibs Mo, you would have seen in my last videos that I made that I had a very, very awful education experience in the sense that at GCSEs, I was bullied by students, by teachers. It was awful. I was labeled, put in bottom sets. Then come A levels, I worked. Because of how bad my GCSEs were, where I got two Bs, three Cs and two Ds, I was predicted three Ds at A level. That's what they thought I was gonna get. These times, I've just finished my second term on my second year at Cambridge University because I got A star, A star, A, and an A and another AS, and I got here. And I want to talk to you guys about that process and what it was like during that time of going through school and going through A-levels. You know the outside of it, you know, like, what's happened, but here's, like, the why, why it happened. So for me, whenever people ask me about my motivation or, like, how do you wake up so early or how do you wake up early? That was a lie. I don't wake up early. How do you keep going? How do you do all these 12 hour studies? How do you do overnights and all nighters and whatever? For me, there were two sides of it. It was proving people wrong because I've never ever really achieved like really good grades before. This is when I was like 17 going into A levels. I never got an A. And I think for me, it was having someone say to me like, you can only get three Ds. You will not get higher than three Cs or three Bs or three As. Having someone say that to me, I just didn't want to accept that. Having someone put me in a box, having someone try to like construct my academic ability, I didn't like that. I hated that. And I feel like this is part of growing up. Because in year seven, year eight, year nine, year 10, 11, I accepted that and I didn't really care. But when it came to actually going into A-levels and doing stuff that I really wanted to do, seeing all of my other friends excel, then it hit me. Why am I being put into this box? And then it really changed when I went to UCL, to UCL Open Day, and I saw that like, this place is where I want to go. I want to go to this building, I want to study here with these people, I want to be academic, I love it here. I learned the entry requirements to study psychology and it said AAA, and I was like, well that's it, I'm going to get these grades. Then I went back to my school and I was like, I want to get these grades. Can I try again? Can you help me? And they were like, no. Nah. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to move. I'm going to move to a new college. And I did. You guys already know I went to B6 college. And even when I was still there at B6, I was still told to some extent, you're not going to get great grades. No one thought of me as, you're the student that's going to go to Oxbridge. You're the student that's going to go to Roscoe University. You're the student that's going to do really well. You're the poster boy. Like, I was literally not that at all. If anything, there was a whole week when I got E's and U's in my key assignments, like my essays. And this was in... November, so like two months in, and guys, I was crying. I remember this one night, I literally was up three o'clock in the morning just crying in my bed because I was just like, I don't want to be here. I was like, I've taken a risk, I've left my old school to go to this new school so I can get higher than my predicted grades. Like, this isn't gonna happen. Maybe I just was destined to get three D's. Maybe this is why they have these predicted grades in place, right? Clearly, there is some sort of relationship, like, so maybe I was just supposed to get three D's. And then I sort of said to myself, like, girl. Do you hear yourself? Do you hear yourself? I went to my teacher and I was like, Jill Bucock, like, I'm really scared. I feel like I'm taking too much. I feel like I've made a whole mistake. I feel like I'm just going to flop. And I haven't really told anyone this. I was literally in tears that night. And then she was like to me, Ibs, you need to calm down and you need to manage and organise your life. And this is when everything started to happen, you guys. I just sat there and I was like, first of all, how am I, am I even organised? Do I even have folders? Do I even have revision booklets? Do I even know what my course is about? Do I even know how A-level psychology is structured? A-level sociology is structured? A-level media is structured? A-level English is structured? I didn't know what a freaking past paper was. I didn't know what a, um, a mark scheme was. I didn't know what examiner's report was. And I just did, didn't put in any energy into it. And I feel like we sometimes can say to ourselves, I'm gonna do so well in this. I'm gonna get an A. 
I'm going to get a first in this essay. But do you actually put in the work? And there are times in Cambridge where I don't put in the work. But I know that now. But I feel like we're so quick to say, Ibs, like, oh, I really want to get good grades. Can you help me? Or like, I really want to revise. But I find it so hard. Like, I hate going to the library. I hate studying. Think, why? Why do you hate studying? Why do you hate going to the library? Is it your subjects? Is it your teachers? Is it the environment? Is it your mindset? Is it because maybe you were tired that day? What can you do to change that? And so when I was like crying to my sociology teacher, like in the staff room in front of everyone, mm -hmm, I was just like thinking out the ways in which I could change that. So what could I do to make myself happy? I decided to get a job. I was able to make some money because money was stressing me out as a well, girl. I'll be honest with you, I was free school meals, but I was so embarrassed to like say it because I wanted a new environment that I never even said like I'm free school meals. I wasn't even eating lunch because I wasn't having lunch provided because I wasn't free school school meals in that I was. So I had to sort that out. I would make freaking magazine folders with cardboard boxes just until I could have some money so I could make my own. I hustled in the sense that like mentally I said to myself, do you know what? I really, really want these grades and I really want to show people that I am unstoppable. So I'm going to work hard and so I'm going to put in the effort and so I'm going to get organised and so I'm going to fix up my life so I can prove to people don't ever label me, don't ever put me in a box, but also I am that person. I am Ibs Mo. And if I say I'm going to get three A's, two A's, stars and an A, I'm going to do it. And then why did I apply to Cambridge? Sometimes I do wonder why did Cambridge accept me because my background isn't that academic. I don't have all these A's, stars and A's. Cambridge get it. They know me. They know what I've been through. They know the struggle. These times when you tell people like I'm the only one in my school to get higher than three A's, that, that means things. And even though like I was predicted by Ofsted to fail because my school, school is unsatisfactory, even though I was predicted to go to an apprenticeship scheme, you know, I was predicted to go to a really low uni, then do a PGC, then teach, like I didn't want to do that. I wanted to set my own limits because I am unstoppable. And once I realised that, once I put my mind to it, I mean... I go to Wilson College and I'm at Cambridge University. I'm not saying it's perfect here. I'm not saying that my life is perfect now because I'm still hustling, I'm still working hard and Cambridge is a struggle, but I'm here and I'm so proud of myself. These times when I think of Stephen Hawking, you rest in peace, Mr. Stephen Hawking, I get the same meaning as he does. When you deed that you're breaking barriers, when you deed that you as an individual are working hard and trying to create paths to other people in the world, you're unstoppable. The quicker you realize that your potential is only created by yourself, sometimes of course, you know, if you come from a bad background, there's gonna be limits to your opportunities. But sometimes you can create new opportunities. What other Asian boy is there on YouTube doing student stuff? I didn't see no room for no Asian YouTubers. Someone told me that you're never gonna do an advert. You can never be an actor because of the whole happening with like terrorism and stuff like that. You will never be on there. You set your own limits. You can create new opportunities for yourself because you, like I said, are unstoppable. You just need to believe that, B. Okay, guys, that's it for me today. Please check out the links below to find out more about NCS and what opportunities they have for you to help you be unstoppable. It is a once-in-a-lifetime experience, and I kept hearing from everyone's doing NCS. Okay, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and please subscribe, and please like, and please check out NCS, and just, I love you. Please, honestly, know that you guys are worth so much, because you guys are actually amazing. I love you so much. Mwah.